Good morning and welcome to our worship service. It might be kind of hard to worship. I keep smelling all this food and seeing it come in. I'm excited for lunch. How about you? We're going to have a great meal after service. Welcome to everybody on Facebook with us today. Welcome to all of you who are here for our service today. I know there's been a lot of sickness, but I'm seeing some people I haven't seen in a while, so that's very good. And we're going to continue our series today, When God's People Pray, and we're going to talk about breaking the faith barrier today. Let's have a word of prayer together at this time. Father, thank you for this day, for all that you do for us, all that you give to us. We praise you for who you are. You are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. You're worthy of worship, and we want to do that right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you would, stand with us. We're going to sing a couple songs together. Um, <laughs> we're supposed to read scripture again today, and they, I volunteered. Um, and I forgot my phone, so you get to look at the back of me again this Sunday. Um, so go ahead and read with me. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Oh 
like they're stopping you, that you're stuck, that there's no, there's no way around it, but resting in the peace that God has already seen victory. It's already done, and I, I love that reminder this morning.
back up. Deb, can you put the words back up there, that last chorus? Just think about that. Can you say amen to that? Is he able, is he capable of saving our lives? Is he? Is he able to extend to us mercy and power in our lives? Isn't that what we just got through singing about? And I don't know about you, but I've come here today to receive. I didn't come here just to get entertained. Now, I, I, I bless God for this group up here, don't you? Man, they do a great job. And, and it has an entertainment value to, to it, and I'm grateful for that. But I've come here to receive from God what I need in my life. How about you? That's why we're all here. This isn't just about how good you look and you all look good. But it's about what God wants to pour into your life and my life. So I'm a candidate for this up here. Go back to the first verse, Deb. Um, uh, well, you know, and look at that. Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. It seems to me we're, we're talking about a God who wins. He wins. Every time. Every time. Never defeated. He's never been defeated. He's, how many times? Four no, 100 no. <laughs> never lost a game. Bless God. We need a God like this, don't we? And that's the kind of God that he is. I'm thinking about some of you out here today talking to Lisa about Steve's needs physically. You need to pray for his leg. He's got a damaged nerve in a leg that causes him severe pain. Don Stark's here. We're praying for God to still give the victory of God over here, aren't we? And Ed... Vaughn lost his brother this week and we need compassion and care there and comfort of God but you're here to receive something for the Lord so I'm going to lead us in prayer but don't just listen to me pray you pray and you may be here for the first time and you've never prayed a word in your entire life but you know what this is this is the class for learning all that where we can pray and just pray it out to God and put it in your own words and you don't have to have special qualifications. You don't need a priest. You don't need a pastor to do that. You just be you and say, Lord, here I am. I'm broken. I need help. And I'm here to get what you've promised. And trust me, he's promised he will supply. I read this scripture this morning. I quit and pray after this, but I read the scripture. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Whatever it says, whatever you ask in prayer, believing. Can you believe God even for the size of a grain of mustard seed? The scripture says it's about like that. About the size of of the head of a, a pen. Ask believing and you shall receive it. So are you ready to get it? Are you ready to have it? Let's pray about it. Lord Jesus, we're here today to admit our need. We confess to you, Lord God, in so many ways we are all broken. Uh, we have stumbled uh, so many times, oh God, we found ourselves kind of limping through life because of what the world seems to dish out to us. I didn't ask for it. I didn't plan it. But something has come along, Lord, to so many of us here today that is hurtful or damaging or wounding. And it sets us back in such ways that, God, I don't know. Sometimes we wonder if we will survive it. Can I get past it? Lord, is there a, a, a victory to all this somewhere? And Lord, today we're here believing that as we look at Jesus on the cross, he had his worst day ever on the cross. But bless God, according to his faith, 
He won over that cross. The cross is not a symbol of defeat. It's a symbol of victory to us today because Jesus rose from the dead. You're alive today. You hear us praying. You deliver to us the power and the promises of God. And as we are asking among all of us here today, Lord God, so many are asking for God's help and intervention and guidance and a word of truth today that brings them through that situation. And Lord, you're delivering that to us now because we are praying in faith. We believe God. We believe your word. We take you for your word. We know it's impossible for God to lie. So that means that God tells the truth all the time and your promises are true all the time. So Lord God, we just have open hands to you today. Put it in my hands, oh God. Whatever we all need here among us, oh God, put it into our hands. We accept it from you with grace and mercy and kindness of God. And Lord, we will give you all the praise and all the glory. Pray for Steve Patton. I believe you right now to touch his leg. God is able to heal that nerve and take away the pain. Lord, I believe you right now to touch John Stark and we come against all cancer. We rebuke it and command it to flee. Lord, among us here, there are sick and here today, we believe God. We believe God to give to us and the healing of God among us. Some here have stumbled in their faith, Lord. They've yielded to temptation. Lord God, we confess that to you today. We've fallen. Now, Lord Jesus, I don't see you kicking us while we're down. I see you putting a hand under our arms and lifting us up. And I believe you to do that for those fallen ones today. Help us to hear of faith today. To trust God for what he can do. To save a soul, to save a believer to heal someone today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be saved. It is so good, as I already said, I'll say it again, to have you with us in service today. If you are a first, second, third time guest, maybe, there is a connection card in your worship folder. There's also a QR code if you want to know how to do that stuff. Um, we are not going to harass you with a bunch of mail or things, but we do kind of see up to speed on what's going on at the church if you fill that out and you'll also get a nice little sonic gift card if it's your first time i think so if you want to fill that out we'll mail that to you this week but I invite you to do that i'm, I'm not going to say a lot uh go over a lot of announcements right now we have a dinner right after church everybody is welcome to stay at that we also have a first time guest with us today that i want to make mention of little daxton scott you don't have to get him out. I think he's sleeping, so we're going to let him sleep. But let's give Lydia a welcome and congratulations. Little Lincoln is back there with her, and we're so glad. We're going to let the kids, if any of them would like to go now with Miss Abby, she's at the back, and you can go ahead and go on back to the kids' church. They meet right upstairs, and uh, you can get them right after church is over. We'll ask our ushers to go ahead and come on forward at this time. We're going to take up our offering. Again, if you have a connection card there in your worship folder that you wouldn't mind putting in the offering plate, uh, that would be wonderful. Father, we ask you to take the offering we're about to take, use it, help us to use it. We want to be wise, we want to be faithful, we want to be generous, we want to help as many people in the area come to know about Jesus as possible. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you as you give at this time. Sometimes we can have a limited view of what prayer actually is. Now, don't get me wrong. Prayer is a means of supplication and making requests to God. It's just that prayer is also more than that. Prayer is both talking to God and having a relationship with Him. Prayer is making yourself available to God and allowing Him to make Himself available to you. Prayer is a way to ask God for provision for tomorrow by which he provides the sustenance we need for today. So we pray not to get our own way. But rather we pray to align ourselves to God's will. We pray not for things that might create independence from God, but rather we pray
is an expression of dependence upon God. Yes, God loves to hear our prayers and requests. He listens to them, he delights in them, and he responds to them. It's just that prayer is also where we can confess our sins, praise his goodness, listen to his voice, and be reminded of truth. Prayer isn't just a way to ask for more fruit, but through prayer, we begin to bear more fruit. Prayer isn't just words spoken at specific times during the day. It's living with a mindset that allows God to transform you throughout all of your days. So don't think of prayer as just an activity done before meals or bedtime, but rather think of prayer as a way of life. A couple weeks ago, I was watching Monday Night Football when the football world, as we know, it stopped. Many of you were probably watching. I'm sure you've heard the story. Number three of the Buffalo Bills, DeMar Hamlin, collapsed on the field. This wasn't any ordinary football injury, not that any are ordinary, but we, we see it a lot. It wasn't even one of the bad ones. Again, I know you've probably heard the story, but he collapsed on the field. He had cardiac arrest. He had no pulse. He had he was not breathing, and immediately the staff came on the field to try to help them, and everybody became a Bills fan pretty quickly at that point. The game did not matter anymore, at, nor should it have, and they've been, I've been following this story the last couple of weeks. I've been praying for the young man. It's just a, a remarkable story. I mean, all of a sudden, there was this nationwide prayer meeting. I mean, th this football stadium full of fans, everybody's praying. You look on the field, and some of the strongest, fittest men in America are kneeling and in tears, praying for their brother. And he's home now, I hear. He's progressing very well. And I don't want to take anything at all away from the medical staff. They did an amazing job. But I, I, I would say this. I believe that that young man is alive because of the power of prayer. Even to the point of God putting that staff there, they had everything they needed at that moment. So just an amazing story, and that's a huge miracle. But there was another miracle you might have missed. On ESPN that week, I don't know if you know much about ESPN, but to say that prayer on ESPN is rare would be the understatement of all times, right? And on ESPN, Dan Orlovsky prayed out loud. I'm telling you, again, if you don't follow ESPN, in any other situation, the nation would have been in an uproar, he would have been fired, but God opened a door. I don't even know if he's a Christian, to be honest. Does anybody know he is a Christian? He prayed right there on television. I, I just want to read what he said. I heard, the, I heard the Buffalo Bills organization say that we believe in prayer and he says this, and maybe this is not the right thing to do, but it's just on my heart to pray for DeMar Hamlin right now. I'm going to do it out loud. <laughs> I'm going to close my eyes. He knew what he was doing here. I'm going to bow my head. It kind of reminds me of Daniel praying, even though they told him not to pray. And I'm going to pray for him. And then he prayed this prayer. God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard because we believe that you're God in coming to you and praying has an impact. We're sad. We're angry. We want answers, but some things are unanswerable. We just want to pray. Truly come to you and pray for strength for Damar, for healing for Damar, for comfort for Damar, be with his family to give them peace. If we didn't believe this prayer didn't work, we wouldn't ask this of you, God. I believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We lift up Damar Hamlin in your name. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? I, I, I didn't see a script in front of him. He was just praying from his heart. Prayer is instinctive for most people when a crisis hits, isn't it? I mean, those 70,000 people in that, in that stadium, I, I, I'm sure they weren't all Christians, right? Maybe half, maybe a third. But in that moment, whether you were a Christian or not, whatever you believed, you were praying to something or someone for his healing. And for me, prayer is both the most rewarding and the chal most challenging thing I do in my life. Can you relate to that? It's really not easy. Although it is a, a, a relief and it brings so much peace, it, it requires work. During our Christmas series, we talked about, do you need a Christmas miracle? And I had 
uh, you turn in miracles that you're praying to God for, and several people turned them in. S several were praying for children that they wanted to come to know the Lord. We can all relate to that if we have a child that's away from the Lord, can't we? That, that heart burden that we carry. And several were about physical issues, and it's just very, very appropriate to go to God with our physical needs. He encourages us to do that. Some were about relationships or marriage and restoration and things like that. Some were about finances. Some folks here, in fact, maybe most of us here, are facing some impossible situations. We've got some mountain-sized problems in our life. Anybody got a mountain-sized problem in their life right now? I mean, it, it, unless God moves, it's not going to happen. I want to go to a story in the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, we're going to be in chapter 9, and I'm just going to kind of walk through verses 14 to 29. If you want to turn there, we'll also go to Matthew 17 in a little bit. Jesus has just been up on what we refer to today as the Mount of Transfiguration. We don't know what mountain that is, I don't think. I don't know, let me put it that way, <laughs> if you do good. Uh, but he'd been up on the Mount of Transfiguration, and God came down on that mountain, and Peter, James, and John were with him. And they saw Jesus and the glory that he had before he came to the earth. He was a human, came as a human, but they saw him as God in the flesh in his glory. And they heard God from heaven say, this is my son, listen to him. That's good advice, isn't it? Listen to him. And that great experience, and they come down from the mountain. And I, I will tell you in the Christian life, just as a little bit of an aside, there will be experiences in your life that's just like a mountaintop experience with God. They're wonderful, aren't they? We've all had them. God just shows up in a remarkable way. Revival services or something like that. But how many of you know you've got to come down from the mountain? It, it, it seems like we live life kind of in between the mountaintops, and we're in the valley, and Jesus came down from the mountain, and he had a mountain-sized problem waiting on him. Have you ever come down from the mountain only to find a mountain-sized problem waiting for you? That's called the devil. <laughs> he doesn't want you to keep going and getting stronger and stronger in your faith. So with that background, Mark chapter 9, verse 14, that he's just come down from the mountain. Peter, him, Peter, James, and John says, When they came to the other disciples, so there's 12 disciples at the bottom of the mountain, I don't know why he chose those three. We talked about it in our class today, but he only took three with him. And he comes down, he sees a large crowd around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. Isn't it just like the disciples to be arguing with somebody? They're either arguing amongst themselves or they're arguing with somebody else. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. Are you still amazed by Jesus? I mean, do you run to greet him? Do you make times throughout the day to focus on Jesus, to pray to Jesus, to tell him how much you love him, to express your thanks for him? If we're not careful, this Jesus stuff can become just like any other routine we're do. Let's not let Jesus become a routine. Let's let it be a love relationship. goes on to say, poor Jesus, what are you arguing with them about, he asked. I remember one time I came back from a vacation, and, and there had been a crisis because the wrong person mowed the yard at the church. It wasn't that the yard didn't get mowed. The wrong person did it. That was like the first thing. I, and I, I was thinking, I think I'll just go back on vacation. I, I, I don't care, okay? <laughs> I, I, I didn't say that, obviously, but I didn't. Verse 17 says, a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech. So a father has a son possessed by a demon and he can't speak. Goes on to say, whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. So he's regularly having seizures. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. Like this kind of rigor mortis comes over him after this happens. And then hear this, it says, I asked your disciples to drive out the Spirit, but they could not. 
I'm going to tell you, when I got to this, in fact, it's highlighted in my Bible. When I got to this, it just stopped me in my tracks. I just, I just had to stop and pray for a while. God, how many times do people show up at our church? Is it possible that people are coming needing something and they're going away without what they need? Is it possible that they need they, that they're looking to the church for a miracle and obviously the church can't bring the miracle but we're supposed to be connected with God and it's not like these disciples didn't have the power God had given them the power to uh, cast out demons they had cast out demons before but when this situation came up they weren't ready to cast out the demon and it was just a reminder to me boy we've got to always always be ready no Sunday is a throwaway Sunday doesn't matter if it's the first of the year. It doesn't matter if it's a down Sunday, July 4th or something. Every, you don't know who's walking in those doors. I don't know who's walking in those doors. I don't know who I'm going to meet tomorrow. And they're going to need something from Jesus. And if I'm not connected with Jesus, I'm not going to be ready to give them what they need. I, I'm just telling you, it just it floored me. I, I just had to spend some time really in prayer at that point. I, I, I'm not getting on you. I'm, I'm talking to me as much as anybody here. Then he says this in verse 19. You unbelieving generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. I obviously don't know the mind of Jesus well enough to answer this question, but when Jesus looks on us, this generation, what does he say? Does he see a believing generation? Or does he see an unbelieving generation? generation I'll leave that to you verse 20 says so they brought him when the spirit saw Jesus it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion I want to stop right there for a second how many of you have ever started praying for something and immediately after you started praying for it it got worse ever happen I'll tell you almost every time for me almost every time I told you about the great miracles that God did in our family last week for our son James we started praying about it and the next thing we know, he's back in the hospital for another surgery. You talk about a faith test. It got worse before it got better. That's called the devil. Or it could be a test. I don't know. So it, he goes on to say, he fell to the ground, rolled around, foaming at the mouth. I mean, this situation's going from bad to worse. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has, been, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. What a, what a pitiful request. And I, I don't say that in a backhanded way against the man, but I, I just feel pity for this man. Anybody who's ever had a sick child knows what this is. I was telling somebody this week, the three worst weeks of my life have involved a child in the hospital. Three worst weeks by far. And this man, this has been something he's been struggling with his whole life, with his son. He wants him to get help. It says, if you can. And then Jesus says this in verse 23. If you can, question mark, everything is possible for one who believes. How many of you believe that? Everything is possible for one who believes. I believe it too. Let me ask you a question. What if that person came through those doors right now and said, please help my son? Would there be enough faith in this room to reach out to God and do what Jesus is about to do? Just, just a faith-stretching question. I think that's what Jesus was doing. He was stretching his faith there. Now is a good time, I think, for me to give a definition of faith, since we're talking about that. But let me give an illustration first. I, heard about some group of Kansans, they're farmers, and they had been in a drought for a long time. They needed rain. So the farmers got together to pray for rain, and they were shamed to find out that only one little girl brought an umbrella to the prayer meeting for rain. She was counting on rain. If we're going to pray for it, why wouldn't we bring an umbrella? Sometimes it takes children to teach us, doesn't it? Let me give you this definition. Faith is the spiritual capacity that God gives us 
to see him for who he is in every circumstance. When you face a mountain, you've got to get your eyes off the mountain, and you've got to get your eyes on God. God's bigger than the mountain. And one of the things I do, you can do this if you want, you can Google this and find out what I'm about to tell you. I, I go to some names of God every once in a while. And sometimes I've got a physical need, and I need to remember that my God is Jehovah. In the Old Testament, Jehovah is the name for God. That's the name, that, how they refer to him. And I remember when I have a physical need that my God is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. I need to tie my need to a name of God because for every need you have, there is a name of God that will build your faith. If I've got less in, uh, income than expenses or if God's asking me to do something with my money, does God ever do this to you? Does he ever ask you to do something with your money that's more than you have? Sometimes he does that to me. I, I've had to just just trust God and write checks and he's come through when I do that I just have to remember that my God is Jehovah Jireh the God who provides if I'm struggling in life and sometimes the devil will come along and he'll say things like oh you're not good enough you ever hear that all you got to do is say well my God is Jehovah Sitkanu the God of my righteousness and devil I am good enough in him if anxiety comes my way, I just need to remember I serve Jehovah Shalom, the God of my peace. If the nations are raging and all of this stuff that's going on in our world starts to get to me, I just need to remember I serve El Shaddai, God Almighty. If I've got a storm in my life, I just need to remember that I serve Jesus, the wave walker. You understand where I'm getting at here? We've got to go to God. When the devil comes to you and says that your children will never be saved, you just say, Jesus is Yeshua, the God who saves. There is a name for every need that you got. Start claiming them. You can Google them. I've got a bunch in your worship notes right there that you can take home with you. Then in Mark 9, verse 24, it says, Immediately the father's boy exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. That is a great prayer. Honest, simple, humble. God, I believe, but I, I need help, Jesus. Give me more faith. I admit that I need more. Jesus uh, saw that a crowd was running to the scene. He rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up to his feet, and he stood up, and Jesus comes through again. Jesus will come through if you don't give up. And then after this, after they'd gone indoors, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we drive it out? And Jesus said, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. Uh, your translation may not say fasting, but many do. I'm not going to go into all of that right now. Prayer and fasting. Then I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 17. I want to read just a couple verses. They asked Jesus the same question. Why couldn't we drive it out? And then Jesus replied, because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Two things I would note, first of all, a couple things, maybe three. First of all, um, the mustard seed was the, like a, the smallest seed there was. But when it grew, it became one of the largest bushes or trees that they had. Jesus says, it's not about necessarily how much faith you have as much as who are you putting your faith in, yourself or God. If you put your faith in God, there's nothing too big, big in your life. But here's the other thing about the mustard seed. It does grow. Give it the right nourishment, do the right things for it, and the mustard seed becomes a big plant. Our faith can grow. And we're going to talk about that today. On October 14, 1947, Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. I want to talk to us today about breaking the faith barrier because that is the biggest barrier that a lot of Christians are struggling with today. You need to, doubt is death to faith. That means we need to starve our doubt and we need to feed our faith. And I'm going to spend some time talking about this, but let me read a quote from Mark Batterson from The Circle Maker. 
that I told you about last week. He said this, just like the sound barrier, there is a faith barrier. If you want to experience a supernatural breakthrough, you have to pray through. That as you get closer to the breakthrough, it often feels like you are about to lose control and to fall apart. Ever been there? You're praying and it just seems like it's getting worse. Then, that is when you need to pray through and press through. It's not time to quit praying then. It's time to pray more, to double down and to do whatever God leads you to do. If you pray through, God will come through, and you will experience a supernatural breakthrough. That's good stuff, folks, and that's true. That, that's not just catchy. That, that is biblical. So I want to talk about some mountain-moving faith practices the rest of the message. First, let me say a couple things just to lay the groundwork. I don't know of a time when a mountain has literally moved and been thrown into a sea. I'm not saying it won't ever happen, but I think Jesus was using a metaphor, maybe a little bit of hyperbole. He's trying to get their attention. Mountains are solid and immovable. And Jesus is saying to us that there are some situations in life that are going to come our way, that they're so big, they seem unmovable, seems like nothing can be done about it. But if you've got faith the size of a mustard seed, God can deal with it. He's bigger than the problem. Secondly, I would just say, we do need to discover what is wrong. They had been able to cast demons out before. Why couldn't they do it now? And I'm going to pray, play, let's just imagine what might have been going on, okay? Jesus, Peter, James, and John are up on the mountain. So Jesus is up on the mountain in glory, and the disciples are down in the valley, right? Kind of like us. Jesus is up in heaven, and we're down here on earth. We're in the mess. And not only did Jesus go, but he took Peter, James, and John with them. That, they were the three leaders of the other 12 apostles. And we were talking about this in our Sunday school class. Wouldn't it be just like Jesus to take the three leaders on purpose <laughs> to see what would happen if the three leaders are gone? What would they do? I, I don't know what was happening at the bottom of that mountain, but I'm imagining there might have been some napping going on. I'm imagining somebody was playing Candy Crush on their iPhone. Somebody was checking to see how many likes their Facebook post got. One of them was trying to become the next Jewish TikTok megastar. I, I, I mean, I'm just imagining, I, I, and I, I, I can't help but think that the nine down there who didn't get to go up on the mountain, I mean, I, I've read a lot about the disciples. I can't help but think why are Peter, James, and John up on that mountain? Why did he choose them? Doesn't he know I'm better than they are? Does he not appreciate me? And they're just beside themselves. And while all this is going up, the crisis hits. And they're not ready. Because it's all about them. Rather than about Jesus and what needs to be done. So what that teaches me is I'm talking to Steve Suttles right now. What that teaches Steve Suttles is that Steve Suttles needs to be ready at all times. I got to watch my attitudes. I got to watch my thoughts. I got to watch what I'm watching. I got to watch what I'm saying. I, I, I've got to be in the Word. I've got to be in prayer. If I want to be somebody that Jesus can use, I mean, if I just don't care about all that, fine. But, but if I want to be useful to Jesus, I got to make sure I'm ready at all times. And I want to be useful to Jesus. I don't know where you're at in that equation, but that's where I'm at with it. So let me give you some things that will help us with these faith practices. Number one is prayer. I played a game with our class. I'm going to play it with you right now. Which comes first, faith or prayer? Yes. Who said yes? That was, that was tricky. You're not playing fair. <laughs> yes, that is it, right? I mean, we were talking about it. Well, it takes faith to pray, right? But then prayer does build faith. So can I just say to you, just pray. How's that? Don't worry about all this stuff. Just pray. Regular times of prayer throughout the day will help us grow in faith. But it does take faith to do that because you're, you're, you're praying. You can't see God, right? You, he's not right here in front of you with your eyes. But I would tell you that if you have talked to several, many people around here, I mean, good grief, we just got a world, a nationwide lesson in it with Damar Hamlin, right? Prayer changes things. Prayers get answered. Somebody say, oh, pastor, that's just coincidence. Well, I'll tell you what, I notice I've got a lot more coincidences going on when I'm praying. 
You can call it coincidence if you want to. I call it God incidents. God's moving. I'm praying. I'm getting connected with him, and things are happening. Prayer is the process that turns us into the kind of person, I said this last week, whose prayers God can answer. The more you pray, the more you become like him. Secondly, scripture engagement. And I talked about this one last week, but I want to add a piece to it. I told you last week, and when we did our prayer time today, we literally we read scriptural prayers right out of the Bible today and then prayed along the lines of those. If you, if you pray in line with God's will for the right purposes, if you pray God's will for God's glory, you will get a glory story at some point. Absolutely will happen 100% of the time. Pray God's will for God's glory, and you will get a glory story. So I want to give you two building blocks for prayer today, and I'm going to keep adding them as we go through this series. And one of them is you've got to pray God's will for God's glory. And second, you've got to pray the prayer of faith. Scripture helps you discern what God's will is. It helps you get your motives in the right place, and it also builds your faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So if you're having trouble with your faith when you're praying, can I just suggest that you get out your Bible? I don't care where you go, really. You can go to Leviticus for all I care. I believe if you read this book long enough, it will start building your faith. It's full of promises, and you can build your life on those promises. You can stand on those promises. It'll get you through the difficult times. Tim Keller is a pastor from New York City. And amazing ministry, wrote many books, retired, and no more than retired, and found out that he had pancreatic cancer. Guys, life's unfair. Ladies, life's unfair. We don't get through this life without difficulties. You live long enough, something unfair is going to happen to you. It's going to happen to me. It's already happened to me. I mean, it's happened to you, I'm sure. He, he talks about the fact with pancreatic cancer, You never know when it's going to unleash and you're done for. And he has to go get scanned every month. And he said, it doesn't really matter how good the last one was. The next one could be the one that is the sign that it's about over. And he taught, I don't know, I'd never heard this phrase, but he used a phrase called scan anxiety." constantly having to go back for scans. And he says, I don't know why. He said this, some days I get a little more anxious than I do on other days. That's a pastor talking, okay? And he says, when I start getting more anxious, I just start reading the book of Psalms until I get to the place of peace that I need to be at. That's, that's getting in the word of God and allowing it to build your faith. The third one is fasting. I'm not going to say a lot about this today because I'm going to do a whole message on it. Fasting is going without food or some other pleasure for the purpose of drawing closer to God and seeking his purpose for my life. Mark Batterson says this. and This is all I'm going to say about this one because I'm going to spend a whole lot of time on it either next week or the week after. He said, because fasting is harder than praying, fasting is a form of praying hard. It's the shortest route to a breakthrough. Let me tell you something. When I give up food, God knows I'm serious. Anybody else? He knows then, hey, Steve's really praying. He, he's giving up his little peanut butter cracker things for breakfast, right? Whatever else I'm eating that day. Pray some big prayers. This last one. I've got seven miracles I'm praying for right now. D.L. Moody said, if God be your partner, make big plans. That's good advice. You know what? What if God is not nearly as put off by our big prayer requests as he is our small ones? We serve a big God. Why not ask him for some big things? What mountain do you need moved today? Do you believe God can move the mountain? Sometimes he answers prayers Regardless, I mean, sometimes just in his grace, he's done this for me. My faith wasn't very much, but he answered it anyway regardless and probably did that so that my faith would be stronger the next time. But I will tell you, the more your faith grows, the more you will see God work in your life. And mountain-sized problems inspire mountain-sized praying. There's nothing like a mountain, right, church, to get us on our knees. 
to remind us we really do need God in life to help us through from day to day. Let me take you to a couple more verses. I already showed you, I want to give you two prayers that you can pray. First one is this. Jesus, I do believe, help my unbelief. If you need to pray that, just pray it. He didn't, I, I didn't see him really get mad at him for praying that. Sometimes I pray it. Jesus, I, I do believe, but man, I'm not where I need to be yet. Help me. Show me what I need to get in the scripture until I get there. Secondly, in Luke chapter 17, 5, the apostles said to the Lord, this would just be a great prayer for us to all start praying, increase our faith. Just start praying that. That's praying scripture. That's God's will if it's in the Bible, right? He wants you to have faith. He wants you to have more faith. So ask God for the right reasons to increase your faith. Now, can I give you a little bit of a heads up? If you ask God to increase your faith, how many of you know what might happen? He's going to test it. You know what? If you pray for patience, get ready to go to the DMV the next day. Right? That's how it develops. I mean, anybody can have faith when everything's going good. I mean, when it gets tough gets tested will I double down will I get in the word of God will I keep praying even when it seems to be getting worse will I keep going to church and raising my hands and worshiping in the midst of the trial and the test and as we do that our faith gets stronger I face things now that 25 years ago if I'd faced them I'd have just been in a fetal position in the corner of my office you've been there faith it builds as we go through these circumstances pray God's will for God's glory pray the prayer of faith I'd like to ask you to stand Austin if you'd come forward let's bow our heads and whoever we got I want to do something today I've been preaching on mountains that need moved maybe you've got a mountain that needs moved today maybe you need God to give you more faith I don't know what the need might be I, I, we've been talking about praying, and I think it'd just be good to close in prayer. What do you think? Why don't we have a prayer meeting? As we sing this song after I pray, if you've got a mountain that needs moved, I'm going to invite you to come and bring that mountain-sized problem to the Lord. I'm not going to do anything. I just You can come pray. You can stand. You can kneel at the altar. You can sit on one of these seats. I don't know. But how about we have a prayer meeting before we leave? How's that sound? Let's take some mountains to God. Let's ask God to give us some mountain-moving faith. Let's ask God to throw some mountains into the sea. Do you think he can do it? Do you think he can do it? Can God move some mountains into the sea? I'm going to keep asking until somebody says yes. Can God move some mountains into some seas? God can do it. All we have to do is turn it over to him. Father, I pray that you would meet with us in this moment, in this hour, that we have this time. God, we came in with some mountains. We want to leave with some mountains thrown into the sea. The mountain may still be there when we leave, but we will be different. And we'll be facing that mountain with the God who made every mountain and the universe and raised Jesus from the dead. And we'll know that he's fighting our battle with us. Let's sing, let's worship. Bring your mountains to the Lord at this time. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight.
into the sea. God, I pray that even right now your Holy Spirit would fall on this place. There's people in the seats that they're facing some mountains. They need a miracle, God. You are a miracle working God. You raised Damar up from the dead. You raised Jesus from the dead. There's nothing we're facing that you can't handle. We come against mountains of cancer. We come against mountains of Alzheimer. We come against mountains of back pain. And we come against mountains of leg pain and heart issues. We come against mountains of children who don't know Jesus. We come against mountains of finances. God, marriages are on the brink. Marriages aren't where they need to be. But you are a marriage healing God. You are a restoring God. And God, we pray that your spirit would just unleash faith in this place. It's a gift. We need it. We ask for it. We say, God, we believe. Help our unbelief. Give us new faith here today, God. Faith as we go into revival for the greater things, God. Faith for what we're facing in our lives. God, we love you and we believe in you. And I pray that as we leave this place, when we leave, that we wouldn't the mountain, but we'd see the God who made the mountain, the God who has defeated death. We give you the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Let's sing this one or two more times. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Surrounded by you. It may look like I'm. 
Stay and eat with us. We'd love to get to spend some time with you. 